Hello, and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today, I'll be showing you how to cycle from Hampstead Heath in North London to Waterloo in South Central London. This ride takes about half an hour, and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. Were you to make this journey by public transport, you'd probably be looking at more like 40 or 50 minutes, so this is a great way to save time, and it's also a lot more fun. If you find this video useful, or you just enjoy watching it, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, as I post new ones like it every week. Alright, let's get going. So we're starting at the southernmost entrance to Hampstead Heath, just on Savernac Road, and you want to turn left and go straight down Savernac Road. Just to the right of where we started, this road has actually been blocked off to motor traffic with bollards, so you can still cycle along it, but it doesn't have very much traffic on it as a result. And this makes for a much more pleasant riding experience. It's a sort of a mini low traffic neighbourhood. Now, um, you want to turn right relatively quickly onto Estelle Road, and uh, this street again is a similar situation. There's no through route here for cars, so it'll generally be quite quiet. The only criticism I have of it is that it's quite narrow. The parking is uh, quite close in. Now, at the end of the street, you want to bear right and go onto this zebra crossing for bikes, and you can cross over here. That's actually a new addition by Camden Council. And it makes a really big difference to crossing a busy road. The only thing that I would say, as I always say when we use cycle zebra crossings, is to look both ways before you cross it, because not all drivers actually observe them yet, as they're relatively new and people don't know what they mean. Now, we are coming onto Grafton Road here. We turn onto the right here. And uh, this road is uh, quite a comfortable ride, and you'll see why in a second. There is a, uh, a clue coming up here. You will see first a road ahead closed sign and then you'll probably see a access only sign and a no through route sign. So you hopefully got the message from all those three signs, which is that this road has been closed to motor vehicles, um, but it hasn't been closed to cycles. Um, so you see the, these planters that are just coming up here and a man nicely illustrating that it's uh, improved the cycling conditions there for us. That's actually a, a block to motor vehicles, so cars, vans, lorries can't go through it, but we can cycle through it. Um, it's enforced by traffic cameras, so if anybody does go through it, they may get a fine. And uh, the result is that the cycling conditions on this road are really, really nice. It really quietens down the street. It basically creates sort of a mini low traffic neighbourhood. And this is nice. This street has a, lot of, um, has a lot of social housing on it. It's good to quieten it down. Um, it's, uh, and uh, it makes it for us as a... Uh, as people trying to cycle through the area, it makes a really nice route all the way up from uh, West Kentish Town up to Hampstead Heath pretty much um, and it's going to make a nice extension of uh, the central London cycle network. It's currently a trial, hopefully it'll become permanent. Um, there's a very nice leisure centre on the left there by the way, I used to be a member of that gym. Um, this uh, junction here, crossing Prince of Wales Road, um, I reckon this could be improved. It could uh, have, you know, some maybe like cycle head start traffic lights just to make it a bit easier. But uh, for now, it's fine. Uh, we want to turn off left here. It's not the first left that we just went past, even though that has cycle symbols on it. It's actually this left, Castle Road. So the way to remember it is that we're on Castle Haven Road and we actually want to go down Castle Road. Um, you go down here and uh, the junction at the end of the street's actually been remodelled. So this does have little uh, cycle head start traffic lights. You can see there, just there, and we can cycle across the junction and we're going to join the cycle track here. Now, I think I might have done something wrong there. I think I, I think maybe you're supposed to wait for the, the crossing and wait in the cycle box before you go through. It's a little bit ambiguous to me, but if you do see any pedestrians there, obviously, make sure you give them priority. Um, and, uh, yeah, maybe you, sh maybe you should do it that way when you do it, rather than what I did. You can see here that we've joined this, uh, this cycle track here. It's a combination of these little uh, plastic armadillos and stepped tracks here. And... Uh, there's one on both sides of the road. Um, it's really quite nice. And we're crossing Camden Road here. This street's called Royal College Street. It's a really great north-south axis down uh, through Camden. Um, so if you don't know Camden too well, we're just going over the Regent's Canal here and Camden Town is to our right. Um, so that is the way to do it. Um, there's something that I quite like here is firstly this lane you can see it's wide enough for um, us to overtake this guy eventually. <laughs> um, and the second thing is the lane has been uh, reinforced with what they call floating parking. So although there are bits of the lane that aren't actually very heavily protected, the uh, the parking 
actually makes it feel a lot more so just like here the parking actually makes it feel a lot more safe and secure from moving traffic um, it's almost like using motor traffic against uh, you know to, to protect cycles which is really unusual I'd love to see this approach taken more um, often actually in London and in other cities all you really need to do is put the cycle in on the other side of the parking than you normally find it and it makes a really really big difference now we're coming out to this junction here uh, we in this direction we just turn uh, we bear left and stay on the, the segregated lane. If you were going in the other direction, I would actually cut through the crescent that's just to the right here. So instead of staying on the main road, just take that little bit on the right there where those bollards are. Um, on the left, by the way, we are going past St Pancras Old Church, the grounds of which are really worth a visit. Um, it has a tree in it called the Hardy Tree, which was supposedly laid out by Thomas Hardy, and it's um, got all these big roots and these um, gravestones from the original graveyard laid out in a sort of Baroque, Gothic kind of way around the, the roots. It's really uh, interesting to see. Um, supposedly it was laid out by Thomas Hardy because he supervised the excavation of the graveyard when the Midland Railway was being built. Um, that's the railway that goes into St Pancras Station, which is the station to our left here. Um, so yeah, if you uh, ever you know need somewhere to you know eat a sandwich while you're waiting for your train, do pop over there, it's definitely worth a visit. Um, this bit's usually quite good. Unfortunately, when I came down here, I, I cycled down this way a lot, and um, this guy's conspired to make it not <laughs> not look very good. He's just gone and blocked the cycle track, and then this other guy's, the DHL guy's, made a mistake as, where he, as to where he can go. Normally, there's no problem there. You can actually usually just sail right through. And it is gratifying to be overtaking uh, all this traffic. Um, and of course on the right there, that's the British Library, that big red brick building on our right. And it's still St Pancras and St Pancras Hotel on our left. The latter of which you might recognise from the video for the Spice Girls song, Wannabe. Um, great tune, great video. You'll notice that this end of this street, Judd Street, is actually uh, closed off to motor traffic. Um, so we've, uh, we've had a nice cut through there. There's a really nice uh, crossing into Judd Street. I think that's a really nice treatment. Um, and as a result, the rest of the street is reasonably quiet. This isn't too bad to cycle on at all. Um, it's a really useful route into central London from Camden. This is probably a good time to say, by the way, that um, if you enjoy this video, then please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit subscribe, it really helps support the channel and it motivates me to do more videos. Talking of which, if you have any suggestions or requests that you'd like to see uh, routes for, then uh, that you think are missing, then yeah hit me up, send me a message, comment underneath, um, I'd love to hear them and uh, I can see what I can do. Now for now we're on uh, Tavistock Place which is a quite a nice useful sort of east-west uh, cut across London, I use it in a lot of videos, um, it's really quite handy. Um, it's again quite lightly segregated but the lanes are wide enough that it, um, it's really quite a nice ride, although it could do with a bit of a resurface, you can see it's um, a little bit bumpy along here. Also, um, the observant of you will notice that we've actually ended up behind the uh, behind the cyclist that we overtook earlier. So I don't know how that happened. Presumably he took another route, um, but whichever route he took, clearly it was roughly the same speed as the one that uh, took roughly the same amount of time as the one that we've gone. So uh, yeah, fair enough. One really impressive thing about this part of town, uh, the sort of central uh, central London bit that's administered by the London Borough of Camden, I think is that there's really, unlike a lot of other parts of London, most other parts of London, to be honest, there's a real like semblance of a, uh, a network of protected lanes crossing the borough. Um, you know, we, we could choose to go straight on, or we could choose to go right, or we could go back on ourselves, or what we're going to do now is we're going to turn left. Um, and we stay on a protected cycle lane with this stepped uh, stepped cycle track. And that's not really an option in many other parts of London, so massive, massively fair play to Camden Council for doing that. They've done a really good job. Um, I mean, this lane's not perfect. It could do with a bit more protection. I don't know why there's not, you know, they could put some armadillos or wands on the, uh, the bits that aren't stepped. And there's a couple of other drawbacks, which we'll, we might get into later, but um, generally, it's really good. And if we had this on every road in London, I think cycling would quadruple overnight. Um, and yeah, so we're going down Gower Street, and yeah, it's really, really generally quite pleasant. This is actually one of the, just coming up as one of the other drawbacks of this lane I was talking about. This guy is part of a lane, but he's doing so perfectly legally because that is a designated loading bay, and it's on the step cycle track, which, I'm, that's not great design. Presumably it was a compromise um, with somebody who felt they needed a loading bay. Um, it's not actually used that often 
Um, so hopefully he's not using it as parking because he would be there for a lot longer. I've not. That's actually the first time I've seen it used, to be honest. So maybe it's okay, but not ideal. It does at least have a step, uh, sort of drop curb for you to cycle off the track and to come back on it on the other side. But it's not ideal weaving into the general traffic lane. Uh, this little bit here is not finished, so I don't know what it's quite going to look like. But we're coming out to quite a confusing junction. So um, you wait at the lights here, and then you do a sharp left, and then immediately follow these arrows and do a sharp right over here onto Endell Street. And uh, this is your sort of cut through um, into uh, central London. We're heading towards Strand now. Um, you can see that there's a bit of an issue up ahead. Um, it looks like a massive traffic jam. It's actually not. Usually this street is relatively quiet, but one van basically just stopped at the giveaway line for presumably checking their GPS or something just for a little bit too long. Immediately caused a bit of traffic chaos. So it's good that they're out of the way, but um, it does show that that road could be improved. So, you know, maybe it could be filtered it could have some bollards on it, something like that, and that would, uh, I think, make things a lot more pleasant to ride down here. The same now, so we've actually crossed out of Camden and we're into uh, West Westminster, the uh, city of Westminster, and uh, this street, while probably the best way just to ride in, is a little bit too busy for my liking. Um, it could do, with, not at certain times of day, it's a little bit too busy. But it has a really nice treatment here at the end. Uh, we go on to Wellington Street, we cycle up to uh, to this and we wait for the lights and we cross this junction, we're crossing the Strand and then you actually wait at the pedestrian crossing here, wait for the lights, um, it's actually a two stage thing and uh, you go onto Waterloo Bridge which now has fantastic, really really wide segregated cycle tracks so um, great work uh, to whoever put these in, it, I think it's a combination of TfL and City of Westminster, their responsibility. Um, really really good stuff um, it's the, the, the whole cycle the whole roadway here is a cycle track so everything to the left of that barrier it's not actually just the painted lane this that's the old cycle lane um, this whole thing is a, uh, a cycle track so buses and uh, buses and other vehicles are actually on the right hand side of that barrier um, slightly odd design the cycle track doesn't go all the way up so we now have to go into a bus lane for a very short period of time but you'll see it's only a very short period of time and we're going to avoid this horrible IMAX roundabout which everyone hates and what we're going to do is we're going to turn left, sharp left down this ramp, down Waterloo Bridge there's actually an identical ramp on the other side of the bridge so if you're coming up you take that ramp so you'd go under the bridge and then go up the ramp and then you would join the other side of Waterloo Bridge we go into upper ground again this is a relatively quiet street could do with some filtering to be honest could do with an improvement. I think Southwark Council is looking at what they call the South Bank Spine Project. I'd really, really encourage them to um, to improve that section there. It would make a much better link uh, east-west across their, across the top of their borough. Um, but we're only on it for a little bit for this video. So we immediately go down Cornwall Road. We wait for the Head Start cycle traffic lights. And we go into this street, which has been closed to motor traffic in one direction. And... Uh, this pub on the left always looks really inviting, I have to say. Um, I, I do see a lot of nice pubs. And I love the bridges around here. These are the sort of bridges around Waterloo, between Waterloo and Waterloo East. They look really pleasant. Um, we're going to we turn right here down Alaska Street. The reason I've gone down Alaska Street is because it's two-way in both directions. So um, I prefer to make these videos symmetrical where I can. But you could go under that bridge and go to the next one. And then we end up on Waterloo Road. And I've dismounted. I'm just walking here and... Uh, walking at this bus stop and you can see that's Waterloo Station on the right there's an entrance to Waterloo Station with a tube sign and a National Rail sign so thanks very much for watching that guys I hope you find that useful or you just enjoyed it it's really nice to see all the infrastructure laid out like that I think and uh, if you want to see a map of this video then make sure you uh, look in the description below and you can download a GPS GPX map for whatever app or device you use um, and uh, yeah if you've got any recommendations, requests of videos you'd like to see, let me know. Please do subscribe to the channel if you're a first-time viewer or, you know, even if you don't normally subscribe to YouTube channels, it doesn't really make much difference. It just means that when you log on to your YouTube uh, homepage, you'll get my videos recommended so you won't miss any. Thanks very much, guys, and I'll see you again next time.